this secret is a huge concept as part of God's plan. The secret of marriage. Yes, and that is huge. This one will take two vlogs, definitely. And uh, there is quite much to, uh, to be said about this topic as well. So we're going to deal with the secret of marriage um, in this vlog. Welcome, beloved, to this video. And we will start right away. Thanks, by the way, for sticking with me. <laughs> we're going to go to the slides immediately. All right, so how did everything start eh, with humanity? Obviously in the Garden of Eden. First, God showed that man, Adam in that, ca in, in that case, had no consort to match him. So God showed that to Adam. How? By bringing every animal of the field and sky to Adam to give them a name and he did however there was no creature that would complement adam so you can read about that in uh, genesis 2 18 to 24 and then the question is how did god solve this issue we know the story right he built the woman out of the man let's read a piece then Yahweh Elohim caused a stupor to fall on the human. While he was sleeping, he took one of his angular organs and closed up the flesh over its place. Yahweh Elohim built the angular organ that he had taken from the, hum uh, from the human into a woman and brought her to the human. Therefore, a man shall forsake his father and his mother he will cling to his wife and both of them will be one flesh this one is an important principle it's not the woman who shall forsake her father and her mother as such no the man will forsake his parents and he will cling to his wife this is an important principle. We will see also further on why this is. So, of course, the, the other remark is one of his angular organs. Wait a minute, angular organs? If you look at the Hebrew word used, that is the proper translation. Angular organ, yes. So, Let's see what is the matter with that thing, that thing. The thing God built the woman with is an organ and it is angular. So what could that be? Of course, the Hebrew word is Hatzila. That's how you pronounce it at least, Hatzila. And if you going to, in, in the concordance, going to search for this word then you will find that it is more often used in the Hebrew scriptures quite often even and it, it often refers to an angular cell or an angle cell like a, like a space like a room uh, an important indication is in Ezekiel uh, 41 where this word is often used frequently used when describing the corner folds in the side walls of the future temple in the Millennium Kingdom. And that temple will be huge, huge. I think the Temple of Solomon will fit like, I don't know how many times, but um, exact, maybe seven times or more in this temple. It's, it's going to be a huge temple. So it will have... In the side walls, it will have rooms built in the walls. 
and these rooms are called angular cells that's how it's translated and i think it's a proper translation you can also call it corner faults but it's an angular cell all right so let's stick with that so the presumption is then this because the translators wanted to know how what what body part to use in order to uh, describe the way the woman was built right so they have emphasized the location of those corner vaults namely in the side walls of the temple so in the side walls those rooms were built by the way before we continue this is what jesus meant in john 14 when he said in my father's house there are many mansions it's not in heaven so i'm laughing because uh, yeah to me it's so clear but i can understand that people still think that he is talking about heaven no he is talking within the framework and confinement of israel's calling and that is a calling on earth being a blessing to the nations so he was talking about the millennial temple in my father's house then in the future will be many mansions and that are the corner faults as well so the angular cells it will be huge as i said so the translators had the side walls of the temple in their mind so they thought oh in that case it is the site of adam that was their conclusion so the the this must be a body part in adam's side so hence their choice for the word rip because that's obvious uh, if it's a body part in adam's side yeah then you very soon um, land with the word rip right however the the emphasis should not have been on the place of these spaces but on the form of these spaces angular form with angles for uh, don't forget that a human a human body has more than one angular organ the heart is a fantastic example of an angular organ the liver the kidneys the pancreas these are all angular organs so be aware of that and one of those angular organs god took out of adam while he was in the, the deep sleep and he built the human around that organ if you would think what organ that would be you would quickly arrive at the most logical angular organ <laughs> used to build the woman namely the uterus oh yes the uterus because before eve was created adam was a complete human being male and female in one body oh yes he had he possessed the reproductive organs of both sexes male and female that's right so it was the uterus that was taken out of adam and with it god built woman read um, i think it's genesis 5 1 or 2 or something like that uh, where god said god created human and then he said male and female he created them so but there he there it's described that god created adam and still it says male and female he created them plural so there you already can see a very hint that it's talking about both sexes in one body in in that sense so now you are processing this information obviously i would too if i were you <laughs> so you want to see proof of course you want to see proof 
So then I will show you proof. Huh? So let's read, or not read, but let's remember that in Genesis 2.21 it says that God takes one of Adam's angular organs and he encloses its place with flesh. So now I will share you with you my view. God took the uterus from the place between Adam's legs and God again enclosed that place with flesh. So these are Adam's legs and he opened like between Adam's legs, took the uterus out of Adam and he closed this opening again with flesh. That's what happened according to my view. And I dare you, so this is my proof, I challenge anyone to look at the spot between your own legs, those are the men of course, with a mirror. Take a mirror, a mirror of your wife, and uh, look between your own legs. You will see a scar. Of course, the women already recognize that with their husbands because I talked to more than one woman and they all recognize this. So God has maintained that spot with the man. You can see a scar and every male has it. Every man. So this is proof without a shadow of a doubt that the man had been operated on by God himself. That is God's wisdom. God deliberately left that spot, that operational spot, so to speak, that operative spot in every man's body as a reminder, which refers to the place on the man where he took out the womb or the uterus. What is the consequence of this wisdom, this action? The man is the one missing something, namely his uterus. The woman misses nothing at all because she wasn't there yet. It's the man who is missing something, right? So who is more independent? The woman, obviously. And that's also logical because God said he would make a help for the man not the other way around so who needs more help exactly it's the man let's remember that together right shall we therefore it's the man who is looking for the woman because also sexually he's looking for his uterus that is nature as god designed and created it in his wisdom God did not want man listen to this now God didn't want man to remain alone and he didn't want man to remain complete hmm how about that there had to be contrast and contrast is as you already know I hope the essence in God's wise plan so there had to be movement, movement between the two parties that completely complement each other in every area. That's right, you recognize it, right? So they are a full complement of each other. So in what sense do men and women complement each other? It's simple. In everything. Men are hunters. Recognize it? They can only focus on one thing. And that's the prey or, if you want, the target, the purpose. Focus. That's why when men watch television, and watch their favorite sports team and <laughs> you know what I'm going to say 
and the woman is calling him, then it's going to be very difficult to, to grab his attention or to distract him. It's going to be very difficult simply because he focuses much stronger than the woman. So that woman's calling or even yelling will sound like a bad distorted sound in his mind. <laughs> I hope you can recognize this. Women, on the other hand, are gatherers. They can do, see, notice, keep an eye on several things at once. If women walk in a shopping street or in a mall, for instance, they see everything. I can guarantee you that. They see all the, the, the bargains, but they also see all the, 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 how do you say that, the, the, the humans that are passing through. They see them before, long before the man see them, sees them. So women see everything and they are the more complex human being. Much more complex than man. So they are also much smarter than men. Be aware of that. Be mindful of that. Because it's about understanding each other. Not become like each other, but understanding where the other party comes from. So obviously the genitals are also complementary and totally complementary to each other. And men are focused more focused on the content so the topic of a conversation what it is really about getting to the cause men are more um, analyzing they analyze a topic and they want to get to the root cause of it so again men are then in that sense also much um, um, more, much more difficult to be distracted they cannot be distracted and therefore they can also not be easily misled or deceived but women can women are more focused on the form the form the appearance the decoration the tone the body language Woman, oh, sorry, women are much more, uh, much better at communication. That you recognize that, hopefully. Uh, in communication, did you know that if you would dissect communication in categories in terms of what uh, really uh, is absorbed by the receiving party? It's 7% only is the content. So the content of the communication is only absorbed by um, for 7%. The tone of voice is uh, makes up for 38%. And the body language makes up for 55% of that communication. Did you know that? So women are much more sensitive of what is actually communicated because they, uh, their, their uh, specialty, so to speak, their expertise accounts for, oh, let me uh, snooze. Yes, sorry. Their expertise accounts for 93% and only 7% the male part, the content part. So I hope you are aware of that. And with having said that, I will end this vlog and then I will continue uh, this topic in the next vlog and then we will also finish it. Thanks for watching and see you then.